In this video, I want to show some examples of graphing quadratic functions. But before I do that, I want to make one fairly minor correction to the end of the last video where we did some factoring with grouping. When I showed you the proof of why that works, I multiplied fx plus g times hx plus j. And when I multiplied them, I did the first term. I said fx times hx. When I did it in the last video, I just wrote f h x. And we know that that's not true. We have f times h times x times x. It's f h x squared. That times that is f h x squared. And then the rest of it I had gotten right. It's f x times j. So plus we get f j x. And then we had g times h x. So we could write that as plus g h x. And then finally, g times j which gives us g, j. So I apologize for that error. I had forgotten to write the exponent there, and I think I had forgotten to write it in the step after that. But it didn't change the argument for the proof. I at least didn't mess up there. So I just want to make that quick correction in case that confused anyone. And I also made a small annotation in that video if you're watching it on YouTube. With that out of the way, let's learn to graph some of these quadratic functions. So let's say I have the function y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. And what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this quadratic expression on the right-hand side. We're going to write it in intercept form. And that essentially means just writing it in its factored form. Then doing that, we're able to figure out the x-intercepts, where we're intersecting the x-axis. And then using that, we'll be able to figure out the vertex. And I'll show you what the vertex is in a second. So let's just factor this, this quadratic on the right-hand side. So we get y is equal to. So what are two numbers where their product is negative 8? So they're going to have different signs. And then their difference is negative 2. Well, let's see, if we have negative 4, negative 4 and plus 2. When you take the product, you get negative 8. When you add them, you get negative 2. So we could rewrite y as being equal to x minus 4 times x plus 2. So this is essentially writing this quadratic function in intercept form. And now let's figure out where this intersects the x-axis. So let me label my axes. This is, of course, the x-axis. That is the y-axis. So when will something intersect the x-axis? The x-axis is when y is equal to 0, right? So let's set this equal to 0. 0 is equal to x minus 4 times x plus 2. We've seen this multiple times before. This means that either x minus 4 or x plus 2, or both of them, have to be equal to 0. So x minus 4 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 is equal to 0. So that means x could be equal to 4. We're just adding 4 to both sides of that equation. Or subtracting 2 from both sides of this equation, x could be equal to negative 2. So these points where we intersect when x is 4, this term is 0, so the whole thing is 0. y is 0. That's how we solved for this. So the points 4, 0 and the point negative 2, 0 are going to both be on this parabola. So let's graph them. So 4, 0, let me do this in a darker color. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 4, 0. And then the other point is negative 2, 0. 1, 2. Negative 2, comma 0 is right there. So that's the two points where we intersect the x-axis. And now we're going to determine something called the vertex of our parabola. And the vertex, you can kind of view it as the, you know, just, to, just to give you a sneak preview, parabolas are the graphs of quadratic functions. And so the graph is going to look either like an upward u or a downward u, and it's going to be shifted around on this. But the vertex is either this minimum point or this maximum point. And the word parabola just describes this function shape. It's the shape of the graph of a quadratic. Let me write that word down. These are parabolas. Parabolas. So to figure out the vertex, you actually just take the x value that's halfway in between the two intercepts. No matter what, the intercepts are going to be equidistant from the vertex. Are going to be equidistant from the vertex. So if that is the graph. Those would be our intercepts. And then our vertex is going to be an x value exactly halfway between them. So to figure out the x value of our vertex, we just average the, these two 
x values of our x intercepts. So let's do that. So we could say the x for the vertex, we could call that, well, let's call that, well, yes, let's call that x for the vertex, so that's why I wrote a v there, is going to be equal to the average of these. So 4 plus negative 2 over 2, which is equal to this 4 minus 2, which is 2, over 2 is equal to 1. So x is going to be equal to 1. And what is y when x is equal to 1? So y, the y for the vertex is going to be equal to 1 squared. 1 squared, I'll just write that as 1, minus 2 times 1, so minus 2, minus 8. So what is this? This is 1 minus 10, which is equal to negative 9. So the vertex is going to be at the point 1 comma negative 9. So we go 1, and then we go down 9. So x is 1, and then y is negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's right there. And so if we were to graph this parabola, the line of symmetry is on the x value of the vertex. So it, let me do it in a darker color than that. So the, the graph should be symmetric around x is equal to 1. And the graph will look something like this. I'll try my best to draw it. Bam, it'll intersect the x-axis there. And it'll be symmetric. It'll look just like that on the other side. And it'll go bam, just like that. I think you get the general idea. And then the other point that you may or may not be interested in is the actual y-intercept. If x is equal to 0, you immediately see that y is equal to negative 8. So the point 0, negative 8 should also be on this graph. And let's see if I drew it right. 0, negative 8, right there, should also be on that graph. Let's do another one of these. Let's do another one. And let me, I'm kind of taking up some of the space for the next problem, so let me clear this. Let's do another one. All right. So let's say we have, let's say we have y is equal to 2x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 4. So here, the thing that immediately jumps out at me is that I can factor a 2 out of everything. So I could rewrite this as y is equal to 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 2. That saves me the pain of having to do the factoring by grouping that we ta talked about in the last video. And this we can factor in a pretty straightforward way. This is, see, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this is x plus 2 times x plus 1, right? 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. So that's what y is equal to. So if we wanted to know the, the x-intercepts, we figure out where this expression is equal to 0. So we said 0 is equal to 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 1. Remember, we want to figure out where we intercept the x-axis. That's the x-axis there. y is 0 on the x-axis. So. Sorry, my phone was ringing. So let's get back to this problem. So either of these have, can be equal to 0. Obviously, the 2 can't be equal to 0. So we get the situation where x, minus, x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0. I didn't have to write the parentheses there. Subtract 2 from both sides of this equation, we get x is equal to negative 2. Subtract 1 from both sides of this equation, or x could be equal to negative 1. So the points negative 2 comma 0. You put negative 2 here. This obviously is going to make y is equal to 0. And and the point negative 1 comma 0, same argument. Those are our x-intercepts. Let me graph it. We have negative 2 comma 0. Negative 2 comma 0 is right there. Actually, let me do this graph a little bit, a little bit bigger. Let's say that this right here is, let me label it in double steps. So let's say this is negative 1. Let's say this is negative 2. That is negative 3. 1, 2. And this is our 3. That's our 3. That's our 1, 2, 3, just like that. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So I'm, I'm using two blocks to represent 1. So the point negative 2 comma 0 is on our graph, or it's our x-intercept. So negative 2 comma 0 is right there. And then we have negative 1 comma 0 which is right there. And then we want to figure out the vertex. Well, the vertex is going to be the average of those two. So the x for the vertex is going to be negative 2 plus negative 1 over 2. 
That's negative 3 over 2, which is the same thing as negative 1.5. Now, what is y equal to when x is negative 1.5? There's going to be a little bit involved. I'll use the actual 3 halves. So we get y is equal to y is equal to 2 times negative 3 halves squared plus 6 times negative 3 halves plus 4. And let us figure this out. So this is equal to 2 times 9 over 4 minus, you have that negative sign there, and then we could make this 6 divided by 2 is just the same thing as 3 over 1. So this is minus 9, 3 times 3, plus 4. This 2 over 4 is the same thing as 1 over 2. So this becomes 9 halves minus 9 plus 4. So let's simplify this. Minus 9 plus 4 is the same thing as minus 5, right? Minus 9 plus 4. Minus 5, we can rewrite, is equal to minus 10 over 2. 9 minus 10, all of that over 2, is minus 1 half. So our vertex, our vertex of this parabola is the point, is the point minus 1.5 or negative 1.5. Negative 1 half. This is our vertex. So we can graph it right here. Negative 1.5, negative 1 half. Our vertex is right over there. And then we can graph this parabola. And if we want to do the y intercept, we can. The y intercept is going to be here. When x is 0, y is equal to 4. These terms cancel out. x is 0, y is 1, 2, 3, 4, right over there. And then we can graph this parabola. It will look like that. That's my best. That's my best. It should be symmetric around the x coordinate of the vertex, just like that. Let's do one more of these. Let's do one more of these. And once again, I've used all my real estate up. Let me clear this out of the way. Let's do one more. Let's say that I have y is equal to negative x squared plus 10x minus 21. Once again, let's write this in intercept form. We just factor the right-hand side. We get y is equal to, well, the first thing I want to do is factor this negative 1 out. Negative 1 times x squared minus 10x plus 21. Now what two numbers, when I multiply them, they're positive 21, so they have to be the same side. And when I add them, I get negative 10. And at least in my brain, negative 7 and negative 3 jump out. I mean, there's not that many factors of 21, so 7 and 3 are probably two that immediately jump out because they add to 10. So you have y is equal to negative 1 times x minus 3 times x minus 7. Negative 3 plus negative 7 is negative 10. Negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. So if you want to find the x-intercepts, the x-intercepts are going to be where so we could set this whole equation equal to 0. Negative 1 times x minus 3 times x minus 7. Our x-intercepts, or the x values that make y equal to 0, are either the ones that make x minus 3 equal to 0, or the x values that make x minus 7 equal to 0. Add 3 to both sides of this equation, you get x is equal to 3. Add, three to both, sorry, add 7 to both sides of this equation, you get x is equal to 7. So we get our two x-intercepts, the point 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, and the point 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0. Now, we know that our vertex is going to be right in between them. So the x for the vertex is going to be 3 plus 7 over 2, which is equal to 10 over 2, which is equal to 5. And the y value, let's figure it out. y for our vertex is going to be negative negative 5 squared, so negative 25, plus 10 times 5, plus 50, minus 21. Minus 21. So what is this? This is equal to, we have a neg negative 25, a negative 21. You add those together, you get a negative 46. Add that to 50, you get y is equal to 4. So the vertex is at 5 comma 4. 5 comma 4. Let me graph that. The vertex is 5 comma 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right in between, and then up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So notice something. In this graph over here, the last two graphs, actually I think I just cleared them, you saw that the you saw that the vertex was below the x-axis. So when we plotted the x 
intercepts, and then the vertex, the upward forming U shape was the only option. But here, the only option is a downward U shape. In order to this being a, either the minimum or maximum point and going through both of these points and having a U shape, our U is going to have to look something like this. Now you let me draw that a little bit better. The U is uh, the U is going to have to look something like that. That's a better better shot at it. Now notice what was the difference between this equation and the previous ones. The difference was is that this one had a negative in front of the x squared. The coefficient in front of the x squared was a negative number. And, and that's why we have kind of a downward opening parabola. If this was a positive number, we would have an upward, an upward opening parabola. So that's why this one is kind of a downward shape, and its vertex represents a maximum point. It's the highest point on the parabola. In the previous videos, we had an upward opening, or in the previous problems, we had an upward opening parabola, and our vertex was the minimum point.